going to demonstrate the Latvian long tail cast on. And this was a suggestion by Andrea through email. She sent me an email asking me to check out this cast on and do a demonstration on it. I'm glad she did. I was not familiar with this cast on. Always new things to learn. And when I learned it, I was pretty impressed with how cool it ends up being. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cast on. Here I've done it in purple. And you can see this is a, a thick cast on that looks really different than a normal long tail cast on. And it is, I want to say it's identical on both sides, which is unique for a long tail cast on, but I'm not quite sure that it is 100% identical on both sides. You end up with um, these bars running across. I really do think it's identical on both sides. But there's something slightly different here, which could be just the back of the other stitches. Okay, you try it out and you tell me. Now, um, when I started looking into this stitch, I saw that it is advertised as a super stretchy stitch. And I did it and I wanted to put it to the test because, you know, I test everything out so that you don't have to. So I did this cast on in, this was, this is one by one rib, and it looks great in one by one rib. It looks great in two by two rib. And I did um, the Latvian cast on, and I bound off in pattern to see how stretchy it would be. And it's good, seems to be about appropriate. And then to, to um, compare apple to apples, I did a standard long tail cast on and a standard bind off to see how stretchy these were. And then I wanted to stretch them together to see if one was way more stretchy than the other. I have to say, this does not seem stretchier than a normal long tail cast on to me. And I actually did it on my blocking board and measured, and I wasn't getting much more stretch out of the Latvian long cord than the regular Latvian long tail, Latvian long tail, <laughs> and the regular long tail. So it's very cool looking, and there may be a bit more stretch in different stitches or different gauges, I found that apples to apples here, it wasn't any stretchier. And then one last thing that I wanted to see was, here it is in stockinette stitch. I would say that with stockinette stitch, let me see, I'll put this on a white background. It ends up being maybe a little bit too lacy looking for a stockinette edge. Depending on what you're making, there are pronounced holes in the cast on. Okay, let's get right down to making this. I am going to seriously recommend that you familiarize yourself with the slingshot long tail cast on. I'll give you a link right here to my video on the slingshot long tail cast on because we use that in this video and knowing how to do that will really help you with learning this one. I always start my slingshot cast on with a slip knot. Not everyone has to. And we start with a regular slingshot cast on. Then the second stitch, let me get myself some more yarn here. The second stitch in the cast on, you can set yourself up like a regular slingshot, but drop the thumb and wrap your thumb the other way. So this is normal, right? This is the wrong way, and that's how we're gonna do this. Then you grab the yarn inside the thumb, from the finger, and through. It's the same motion, the yarn was just wrapped differently on the thumb. So we go back to a normal slingshot. There's normal, there's backwards thumb. So the work, it's worked in pairs. Normal. And I'll tell you, every time I, I cast on with this, I, I knit the first half, which very, very familiar with. And then when I knit the second half, I put my thumb in there uh, the normal way, drop it and do this to make sure that I have it right each time. Normal slingshot, backwards, thumb. Really slowly one more time. Normal slingshot grabs the outside of the thumb, first finger through, tighten it up. Latvian, you drop the thumb and put it on there the wrong way, wrapping the thumb the wrong way. Grab the inside thumb strand, 
the first finger, pull that through and tighten it up. Now since this is worked in pairs, um, the slip knot is actually giving us an extra stitch that isn't one of a pair, right? You see they bunch together in, in little pairs like this. So what I do is I um, do the slip knot and then the next stitch I do is on the thumb the wrong way. So I actually slip knot and do the second half of the stitch so that that is a correct pair and there isn't this extra stitch. If you don't do that, when you work the next row, knit the last stitch, the last two stitches together or work them together however the pattern tells you to so that you don't end up with this extra stitch that isn't one of the pair. And that's it, the Latvian long tail cast on. Many thanks to Andrea for the suggestion. Thank <laughs> you.